for public information. How did the corporations react? I mean, the union just spent, spent their funds. They didn't try to disguise it. It's harder for corporations. I mean, can you imagine uh, BP is going to make a contribution to a political campaign? Uh, and so they tend to filter this through uh, group like social welfare organizations that don't, uh, and issue advocacy groups that don't have to report their contributors. But of course, the, the more you spread it, I should say, the more layers you put between yourself and the money, the less control you have over your money. What I wanted to do with this uh, introduction, I wanted to interact with, uh, uh, with you on this, uh, is that for, for those of us who strongly believe in the First Amendment, the decision in Citizens United is a decision that we favor. Because if we strongly believe in the First Amendment, we believe that, the, that there should be very few restrictions on freedom of speech, that all ideas should be free to compete in the marketplace of ideas. And that takes a lot of trust in the ability of the people to make good decisions. And I think academics and intellectuals are sometimes skeptical of that. But that's the theory of the First Amendment and how it supports democratic government. That you give the public as much information as is possible and you let people make up their minds. And that any restriction on speech impairs the ability of the public to have all the relevant information for their decisions. So that's the thesis that I wanted to present to you today. And now I think those of you who are here might like that might like to express your own thoughts or have your own questions. Um, I remember when the decision was first handed down, there was a lot of vitriol, as you mentioned, against um, the decision based on corporate interests, but very, very little based on um, its advocacy for union interests, and why do you believe that was? I had a debate with Mark Brewer, who is the head of the Democratic Party, the shared of the Democratic Party in Michigan, and this exact question came up. And his answer was, corporations have so much more money than unions. And corporations will use their money to advance corporate interests and advance the Republicans. So uh, the fact that unions can expend their, their own funds uh, doesn't equalize any. But note that even without that, they could spend their money on PACs. But that, uh, that's the reason, that the unions uh, aren't going to be able to raise as much as labor unions. But I would point out that once President Obama starts his internet operation going, he's going to raise so much money that corporations would have to empty their treasuries to compete with the amount of money he's going to raise. And, you know, look at the Republican candidates. They're also going to raise money on the internet, but they're going to have to be using that money to compete in primaries where the president can save all of his money for the general election. I guess my, when I heard it, my skepticism was this is terrible. But I mean, you talked about the nuances, I guess it is. I thought also that these corporations are going to control everything like they've done and they have pre-Watergate. That was my, uh, but clearly you talked about nuancing. It's not, uh, I guess what, what troubles me is that they can sort of hide behind and you don't know where it's coming from, I guess. That defeats the disclosure objective. But that's because the law, the well, First Amendment issue, it's because the applicable statute, namely the Internal Revenue Code, doesn't require issue advocacy groups to identify contributors. So, uh, uh, if you represent, uh, let's say that you want to make a contribution to Planned Parenthood, 
a pro-choice person. Uh, Planned, Parent, Planned Parenthood has about four different organizations, some of which are tax exempt. And so uh, they don't have to reveal that. Now, speaking of Planned Parenthood, let me share a story with you that illustrates uh, what I say that freedom of speech is cut from whole cloth. This is 1998 in Michigan. Now, Michigan had a similar rule barring corporations and labor unions from using general funds uh, for certain expenditures, one of which was like the rule in Citizens United, banning the use of corporate funds or union funds to name an advertisement that named a candidate for re-election within 60 days of the election. I remember that, that a number of nonprofits, like Planned Parenthood, are organized as not-for-profit corporations. Well, Planned Parenthood had about four different corporations. It was affected by this regulation because it wanted to publish voting records to show who was pro-choice and who was pro-life. Michigan right to life was equally affected by the regulation because it wanted to publish ads, show scorecards, showing what legislators were pro-choice and pro-life. So ACLU came in on the side of Planned Parenthood, and I represented them. We won the case in the Eastern District of Michigan, and Right to Life won an identical case in the Western District of Michigan. <laughs> so, I mean, freedom of speech is cut out of, out of all cloth. One of the problems with the regulations before was that in order to avoid a First Amendment issue, the regulations had to be construed very narrowly. So, unless the regulations said, vote for Smith, or vote for Jones, it was not express advocacy. Uh, there was a, a the group that uh, published a, a campaign ad against, well, really, it was sort of against former President Clinton, uh, but it, it really wasn't against him. And that it said, this is the worst human being on earth. Uh, you don't want a, a terrible president and so forth. But it didn't say, vote against them. And so that didn't come within the prohibition of the regulation. Now, the Supreme Court decision, I think, brings things more out into the open. You can have express advocacy. The unions can spend their money, uh, defeat, uh, as they did in Nevada. Uh, union, uh, that's often overlooked, that the union funds were very important uh, in Harry Reid's victory over Sharon Angle. So the unions could expand the funds and say, vote for, vote for Harry Reid. Similarly, the, uh, not that they did it, but the, uh, the corporations could expand their funds and say, vote for Sharon Angle. Also, we've, uh, uh, it doesn't mean you're still not going to have PACs, because uh, you can raise money from the PACs. There you know that everybody has voluntarily chosen to contribute uh, the money. Uh, so things are, I think, are much more out in the open. And if corporations spend the money themselves, they have to disclose the way candidates do. I'm John McCain, and I endorse this ad. Uh, if you look at the political ads, it's pretty well identified who is uh, sponsoring them. It's also identified uh, when you have a, 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 a group, uh, but all the groups have nice names. So that, yeah, so that you, know, you, you never know uh, 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 who they are. Uh, my son in Chicago has a public relations firm. He's a partner with David Axelrod before Axelrod had the vest. And, and you know, they do this kind of uh, issue. Yeah, but, uh,